Hey, well, my am Bobby T, and today we're attending the special screening of the new documentary, Generation Revolution. This film tells the powerful story of London's new generation of black and brown activists who are working to change the social and political landscape. We're gonna speak with some of the filmmakers and members of the Black Lives Matter Alliance of Broward who organized this screening. We hope you'll enjoy this segment. Thanks for watching. There's no way you can be black in London, really, I think, and not be aware of politics growing up. You see how much it starts to entrench your daily life. Can you tell me a little bit about what brought this film to be? Yeah, uh, so Generation Revolution is a project that we started making in 2014. Uh, it started out as a short film about the uh, new generation of young black and brown activists in the United Kingdom, and we really felt that we needed to uh, bring the story to the big screen. So for us, it was really a question of talking about the experiences of young people of color in the United Kingdom, but also talking about the really great activism that was going on. You know, you've got a president here who is trying to enact bans on certain communities. In the UK, we've just voted for a very regressive policies um, to leave the EU. Um, now is the time to get involved. So really, it's just a, a, an appeal for people to, to look at these things and try and understand and get involved in activism. Andre, can you tell us what brought you out today? So um, as a member of Dream Defenders and the Black Lives Matter Alliance of Broward, uh, it was, it's, it's, it's my duty to, to be here to see this film. It's my duty to connect to activists from across the pond, to activists around the world. Tell me a little bit about your organization. Well, our organization started January 14th here in uh, Broward County. We were created from the Indivisible Guide, which was created by a bunch of congressional staffers in Washington, D.C who developed uh, resistance to the Trump agenda after the election. What made you decide to get involved in this organization? So I've done a lot of uh, civic participation programs all around the world, and this was the most successful one I've ever seen. So I wanted to be a part of it, and I wanted to counter the Trump agenda. So that's what we're here for. The reason why I came tonight is um, I came from the belly of the beast. I uh, grew up close to northern Idaho, Aryan Nation. Um, I left that world when I was 18, so I'm very clear on what the enemy looks like. And since my bubble's gone, I've made it my mission that I'm going to be wherever I can, where the, where the fight is, today it's here. Bruno, tell me a little bit about what made you get involved in with the uh, BLM movement here in Broward. Sure. Um, I think just uh, taking a step back and looking at some factual evidence around the matter just kind of was alarming to me. So I decided to get involved um, and I've been hanging out with these folks for a little while now. Um, I'm actually happy that you guys are out here. I'm from Wilton Manors myself. <laughs> I'm glad to see the community out here uh, Absolutely. uniting with us. Uh, we're we're Wilton Live. We like to be everywhere. I work with the National Lawyers Guild and um, we provide legal observers during uh, First Amendment events. We come out and document various uh, events in case there's a problem with, uh, with the police. Uh, our job is to, uh, basically we're, we're neutral in these act activities, but we're there to make sure that if somebody does violate uh, a, a protester's First Amendment rights, that it's documented. Can you tell me a little bit about what got you involved in this organization? I actually got involved right after the um, um, Castile shooting and I felt that I have African American men that I love and adore and if something like that were to happen to them I don't I would be devastated so I th decided that I needed to create some type of change and some type of dialogue around this issue that's happening nationwide. The name of the organization is Emerge USA we are a national civic engagement group that focuses on uh, civic engagement and civil liberties and specifically focus on education initiatives with American Muslims across the country and I'm the state director for Florida. Jasmine can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a black woman in America today? Yeah, uh, it's an experience that's unique because I'm both black and woman. Uh, so we've seen throughout history that there's been a lot of spaces that didn't include us as we are. We had to choose between either being black or being women when we fought against different uh, injustices. Uh, the women's suffrage movement did not include black women. And when folks were fighting for their rights, when black men were fighting for the right to vote, there was a lot of patriarchy that was intertwined with that and being like, you know, you stay in your place as a woman, I'm the man of the house. So black women have constantly had to blaze their 
their own trail and, and show up in their own spaces to represent themselves. I want people to know that white women <laughs> Don't, don't accept this. This is not acceptable. This is not my America and I'm not going to stand by and let them take it. I'm also here as a mom. I'm a pissed off mom because um, I teach my daughter every day that lying is wrong, that you need to respect others and I'm having a really hard time showing her to lead by example if our leadership is lying to us. And what types of things would you want to teach your daughter for the future and how she handles society? Mm, that's a good question. I would say that um, pay attention and learn. Educate yourself and be willing to get uncomfortable. Have you um, ever experienced any forms of discrimination uh, here within the community? Depending on the police officer that I'm getting pulled over by, you know, um, if they identify me more as Latino, they'll treat me a certain way. If they identify me more as white, they'll treat me a different way. I get, I get a lot of passing privilege in my life, and I get to see the types of, of privileges that are afforded certain people, while also being right next to a lot of the other side of things. Uh, you see that right here in the Black Lives Matter Alliance of Broward. We're made up of a conglomerate of groups from different racial backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds, different gender identities, all, all from all walks of life. Folks throw around white privilege being out there. Do you feel that that's something that exists here in the U.S.? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think the big thing is that, that when people have privilege for one reason or another, use it. Because we're all walking around with privileges and oppressions. Because um, in me being a black woman, I'm not just all oppressed. I'm also able-bodied, I'm heterosexual. So in those things, I have privilege. So it's my duty in my privilege to show up and to listen in places where those parts of me may be marginalized. You look at black people, you look at women, they don't make the same amount of money as a, as a white male does. I mean, there's no question. I mean, you know, if you don't have unions, you end up in the situation that we have in this country today where you're subject to whatever a boss or a corporation decides to pay. And if you're white, you probably are going to make more than somebody who's black or Chicano or, I mean, or Latin or or gay or, you know, there's no question about that. Do you feel as though the current political climate has actually brought out more millennials to get involved? Most definitely. Um, I think that the, the political climate is ripe uh, for millennials to step forward. Uh, I think it's, it's our time. Um, I think that it's our responsibility. I think it's our civic and social duty to step forward and take the reins. So really for us the challenge was actually uh, not, not watering down um, the stories but also le allowing people to speak uh, in their own terms. So obviously we have young people talking about uh, ideas like white supremacy, talking about patriarchy, talking about heteronormativity, talking about capitalism uh, and within the industry it's very difficult to talk about those kind of things. It's been a really rewarding struggle, it's something that we committed two and a half years to doing. Um, and to be here, you know, in Florida right now with you, I think it's, it's a really rewarding and exciting thing. If all lives matter, we wouldn't be dealing with police brutality as rampant as it is right now. We wouldn't be dealing with a prison system that is for profit if all lives matter. If all lives matter, everyone would be concerned about those girls that are missing in D.C. We wouldn't have to be here showing films about revolution worldwide if all lives truly did matter. So because they don't, we will say emphatically and unapologetically that Black Lives Matter. There's a thirst for this kind of organization, which is young, black, revolutionary, militant. People aren't going to rest on just accepting injustice. Yeah.